Are you saying it's like an 80% chance it's gonna rain because you just will not leave us alone? Is it gonna rain? I say there's 70-80% chance this dog thinks it's gonna rain. Recording? Yeah. Okay, so clutch plate, pressure plate, flywheel. We, I haven't actually removed this because I wanted to show you guys um, what it looks like and all the goodness inside. Oh, that's nasty. And so what has happened is this got so worn down. It should look like this. It should have this material on here, but it's gotten so worn down, it's actually worn off all of the friction material and it's gotten down <laughs> into the rivets. So wow. you can kind of see that stuff. Now, word of caution, don't breathe this stuff in. I know you were like thinking like you should like snort it or something, but oh, yeah. this, they stopped using asbestos a long time ago, but right around the eighties, there's still some kind of, you know, there's still some asbestos out there, but this stuff, when you inhale it, I know from personal experience, you get a big, big, huge lung full of this stuff. You actually, it makes your lungs feel cold. Like you, like, a, mm. uh, if you ever smoked a menthol cigarette or something, that's what it makes you feel like. And you know, it's just not good for you. So anyway, refrain from doing that. So your clutch kit comes with a new pressure plate, a new, um, clutch plate itself. It's right over there if you want to do some side-by-side -side stuff. Okay. Um, on cars, I always suggest, and I'm not going to do a clutch job unless somebody will actually buy a brand new flywheel. Now you can take this to machine shop, you can have a machine it down. The problem with that is I have to take everything apart, pull the transmission out, I got to go drop the pressure or the, drop the flywheel off at a machine shop wait for a week to get it back and then go put the vehicle back together and it's just it's too time consuming for me because i don't want to leave the location and come back to location or leave it in my shop for a week mm -hmm. flywheels are pretty cheap this probably costs chucky 30 to 40 bucks yeah 30 40 dollars even on the extreme side you know a couple hundred bucks look at it like it's not 200 dollars that you're wasting it's 200 dollars of your time that you're saving because time is money and if you have to wait for four or five hours or a week and come back to it it's already paid for itself all of these marks around here, they call these heat check. This is where it got so hot that it's actually tempered the material. Like if you were to look at this in a microscope, um, I forget what magnification or whatever, but it actually crystallizes the metal right around that area. It's kind of like getting a torch and just super heating these little bitty spots. And that's where this actual clutch plate has slipped like that mm -hmm. under a tremendous amount of load. Um, somebody has done this clutch job before and they didn't do a very good job apparently because you see how these all have fresh rings around them? Those are from the bolt heads. This one doesn't have one because the bolt's missing. And I don't know where the bolt's at because it's not stuck in the clutch. And it's just missing a bolt. Yep, just, just gone. Someone decided that putting all the bolts and the main power transmission coupling in the entire vehicle was really more of just the manufacturer's opinion. You know, six is just, just way overkill. Um, Get better gas mileage this way. Probably what happened, they put this back together with an impact or something or by hand, they didn't tighten it down. More importantly, they didn't put Loctite on these bolts. Whenever you remove flywheel bolts, you always put Loctite, Loctite red. Don't put Loctite blue, don't put Loctite green or white or any other color. Loctite red, which is like the permanent hole, put them on there because this thing vibrates and you do not want this thing coming loose. If this comes completely off, you've ruined your transmission, you probably jacked up the engine and you just bought yourself, you know, six grand worth of parts. Uh, let me grab this other clutch plate, pressure plate, and I'll show you kind of side by side of what it should look like. Okay, so when you buy a clutch kit, a proper clutch kit now, uh, did you buy this whole setup all at once or did you buy the flywheel set? The flywheel was separate, but it was like uh, the recommended one for it or something. I okay. bought it on the interweb. So a lot of times, uh, if you get a Rock Auto or something like that, it'll come with the entire setup to where you have uh, the flywheel, the clutch plate, the pressure plate, you get your throw out bearing and the installation tool. And this thing is invaluable. If you don't have an installation tool, you need to get one. On Ford Power Strokes, for some reason, usually when you buy the clutch, it doesn't come with an alignment tool. And you will be fighting this thing for days trying to get it lined up. Ask me how, or how I know that, because I had to do it. Not saying it's impossible, uh, but I'll show you how to use this um, this clutch alignment tool. So, like I said, in, in another word of advice, knives are for losers. Yeah, <laughs> plastic. <tricks. laughs> so, this is our pilot bushing that actually goes into the crank, like down there. Got it. Which this one on the transmission was actually completely gone and missing, so that might be another problem. Your installation tool. Make sure it fits the old clutch plate. Mm before you try to line it up. Because what'll happen, and this happened to me before, they put the wrong one in the kit and the wrong clutch plate. So it fit this one just fine, but it didn't fit the old one. So 
I go to install this, I put it in, I install it, I pull this out, try to stab the transmission, it never fits. And I jack with it for like three hours before I finally figured out it's the wrong installation tool and the wrong freaking clutch plate. So, um, like any kind of mechanic work, before you go putting stuff back together, compare the parts, make sure the parts look fantastic. When you get them in your hand, make sure the springs are all, you know, like on a clutch plate, I'm gonna make sure these springs are all tight. I'm gonna make sure all the rivets are all sunk in, just like the rest of them, one's not popped up. Give it a, you know, look for any kind of cracks, and if there's anything kind of questionable, don't install it, because you don't wanna do this job a second time. How's that one look? This one? Yeah. Looks great. Looks fantastic. Third world child laborers, man, they get the job done. Yeah. Then the actual pressure plate itself, it comes wrapped in this, um, uh, that vegetable, whatever they call that. What do they call that? A vegetable paper? Uh, like butcher paper or something. No, nah, it's parchment a, paper. Is that it? No, no. it's actual. They they treat it in a, vault, a VOC, a volatile organic compound, and what it does, it off gases, and when it off gases, it fills the package up full of that gas, and it displaces all the oxygen. Interesting. So the actual material itself, because this is just raw steel, that's why this doesn't rust. Now, if you leave it outside for a month, it will rust. Yeah, all this paper, so much. they spray some kind of chemo, I forget what it is, but they call it a VOC. And that's why you always get this kind of like uh, uh, vegetable paper looking stuff in here. But anyway. I'm going to rub that all over my face so I age better. There you go. That'll be great. You don't need oxygen. Um, pressure plate, the same thing. Make sure all the rivets look good. Make sure all these um, uh, release, or not release forks, whatever these are called. I forgot what they're called. The fingers or whatever. So make sure when you push them that they all are stiff, not one's lot, not all loosey-goosey. And this is one of those things you really want to make sure you spend some time looking at this and inspecting it because once you put it in the vehicle, it can fight you getting the transmission back in. But once you get it completely in and you push the clutch pedal and it doesn't work. Oh, that's bad. I've had it happen. I've had oh. to pull an 18 wheeler apart before because I didn't look, you know, and the, the clutch didn't, you know, something wasn't right. I had to pull the freaking eight and the transmission back out, which is a fun job to do. But that looks good. The clutch plate looks good. We'll go ahead and wrap up the pressure plate back into this paper just to make sure that um, it doesn't rust on us. Set it right there. Like I said, that's the difference of the two. Wow. Wow. That's what it's supposed to look like on both sides. So this side doesn't look that bad. And generally that's what will happen. One side will wear down and the other side will be just fine. Hmm. So now you just flip it in the other way and drive it for another 50,000 Hey, there miles. you go. Like the way you think. Farmer friendly. Yeah. So you can tell there's a little bit of a, a difference here. These are these small springs on this one. This one has large. These are just like kind of a vibration dampening spring. So this little plate in here is actually, um, it's two separate pieces. Ah. So that way when you engage the clutch, it gives a little cushion effect into it. Um, that doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean that six springs is better than four springs because these are all actually double sprung. There's a little bit of springs inside the middle here. Um, it's probably just two cents cheaper for them to produce. Probably, you know, you don't know, I don't know why manufacturers do what they do, but there's got to be some kind of magic to it. Then the actual flywheel. Again, there's that paper that I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. That's that for, you know, VOC treated paper. I learned something new today, thank you. A lot of times, something else guys, you could take this stuff and like in your small toolboxes, I always leave this stuff in my toolboxes because it'll help displace the oxygen in it. Um, it's kind of like those desiccant bags. Anytime I get a big desiccant bag or anything, I throw it in my toolbox to help absorb all the moisture out of it. Flywheel, same exact thing. Make sure that you compare it to the flywheel. Make sure everything looks... That's probably the original. You got a Japan. Now there is gonna be a couple of different things because this is a different manufacturer. The casting's rougher on this one. The actual shape is a little different. What you're looking for is like the bolt holes. Are the bolt holes, you know, look the same? Do the uh, hole are the holes the same size? You're looking at the rain gear. Make sure these rain gears are actually a different material. They're actually um, they're heated up, and then the flywheel itself is usually cooled down as an interference fit, and they slide it on. Make sure the whole rain gear is seated all the way around. And if it's not, it's not a big deal. Just set it down, take you a brass punch, and hammer it back down to get it to seat right. You definitely don't want it loose. On this side, you want to make sure everything's nice and flat. You want to make sure your dowel, you have the same amount of dowel pins. So there's three, three dowel pins here. There's three dowel pins over here. Everything looks pretty good. The surface looks pretty good. Now before we put this in, I'll clean this surface with brake clean and a rag. 
And then when this is in the vehicle, I'll make sure this is absolutely spotless. I'll make sure the new pressure plate on this mating surface is absolutely spotless because if you get any oil on here at all, especially like from your greasy hands, when this plate sits on there and moves, it'll pick up that oil and it'll heat up and you can toast your brand new, brand new clutch. But that's the things I'm looking for when I get a clutch. Make sure you guys go over this two, three times. I encourage you to go over it once, take a break, go get some water, go use the restroom, you know, check Facebook, whatever you want to do for five minutes, come back and check it again because you might see something that you didn't before. So next time we go before we install this, I'm going to look over it. I'll have Chucky look over it because we just don't want to do this job a second time. It's just not as fun a second time. But I hope you guys learned something from that. Um, I'm going to come back next week and put this all back together because uh, mainly I don't trust old farmer Chucky and his <laughs> welder. Back, it's all welded solid. We don't need a clutch. We started in gear. It'll be fine. <laughs> but I hope you guys learned something about this. And um, at least uh, for my video, Chucky's holding Yeah. It. He's double fisting the, uh, the cameras for us. Um, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. And if you have... Any advice or suggestions about clutch jaws anybody else can pick up, leave them down in the comments and get out and fix something.